What's up, internet? SV here for the Marduk Report, and today I want to talk to you about camera gear and specifically 3D printing follow focus gears. So, if you have a follow focus, you probably came with something that looks like this. This is for the Fatka DP503. It is the follow focus gear that comes with it. It's a basically a piece of rubber with teeth along one side and a plastic bit that the teeth fit into to make a loop that goes around your follow focus or that goes around your lens sorry um, it's serviceable it totally works fine uh, i wouldn't complain too much about them but the issue is that if you have a lens like the lens on my camera right now which is the sigma 18 to 35 fitting this follow focus gear onto it puts it at about yeah, I'd say that's about right. Like that's that's way too big. Holy crap! Probably about like that actually. So this is about the size of what it would be like if you were to fit it around the Sigma eighteen to thirty five one point eight. So the problem is that from here to here becomes unusable on the follow focus gear because basically it's one gear on the follow focus, and if it hits this, the double stack of the of this rubber bit or this plastic piece, it's not gonna actually be able to roll over that. So you're only limited to, you can only actually use this much of the gear. So what do you do? Because you don't really have a lot of options with to replace this. Like you can get a cinema lens, which I mean, if you got money like that, like I don't know why you're watching this video. Uh, you can get your lens rehoused, which Again, if you got money like that, I don't know why you're watching this video. Or you can do a much more economical route, and that is getting 3D printed follow focus gears for all of your lenses. Now, you might be saying like that's a huge amount, and that would be a lot of money if you have a lot of lenses. If you're starting out, or if you're on a budget and you don't have a ton of lenses, so like say you got the Sigma 18 to 35, and maybe like one or two other lenses. It's three parts that have to get printed. Probably won't cost you that much. And I can tell you why, because I've got some. So this is the Sigma 50 to 100 1.8 with a 3D printed follow focus gear already on it. That's what this light blue thing is. I've got another one that you can't see right now because it is actually on my Sigma 18 to 35. And those two gears, or these two gears, I should say, between the two of them cost me about $16 sing, so not even like 13 bucks maybe to get printed. I'm not actually going to show you how to make and design these gears because someone else has already done that much better than I have. And I will link to his video here. His name is Lucas Faf, I think. I think his name is Faf. How do you pronounce his name? He has a P in the middle or in the front of his last name, so I don't know if that's silent or not. I assume it is. Um, but he has a great instructional video on how to actually design the follow focus gears that would go on any lens. It takes about 30 minutes to design the gears, or at least it took me about 30 minutes, and that includes the time I spent downloading the two programs that I needed to use in order to design the gears. From that video, I decided to make a few changes uh, on my own gears that makes hopefully a few things a little easier. Firstly, I made this a bit taller. So in his video, he suggested that to make them about 10 millimeters in height. I've made mine 15 millimeters in height so that when I put the lens on the camera and then have to slot in the follow focus, I can make this line up a lot easier with a lot less fuss. Basically it gives me a little bit more room for error without having to worry about the gear sliding off. Secondly, I printed these at a hundred microns. So for anyone that is new to 3D printing as I am, like I know of it, but I've never actually gotten anything 3D printed before, the quote unquote resolution uh, of a print is measured in microns. So the lower the number, the smaller, I guess, the gaps or steps between each layer are. So it goes down to about 50 for consumer prints and goes up to about 500 in, I'd say about the power of two, but it's not really. There's like 50, 100, 200, 500, and then it just keeps going up from there. 
Um, 200 is about average. I wanted something that was a little smoother so I'd have less sanding to do. So I got these printed at 100 microns. It will cost more because it will take longer to print and use more material, but the cost shouldn't be that much more. Third thing I did differently, again, this is a 3D printing noob thing that I learned, is that I got the fill increased. So I thought, and I clearly thought wrong, that 3D prints were just filled with solid plastic. So it was a complete thing, it was just filled with solid plastic. That's not quite the case. Uh, you can actually decide how much plastic is put on the inside of your 3D print. Starting at 0%, which basically just makes it a shell with a bottom top and two sides, all the way up to 100%. Your standard print is gonna be between 20 to 25% full, which means that inside your print is going to have or 20 to 25% be plastic and the rest of it's actually just gonna be air. Um, so basically the printer will print in either a hexagon or a lattice checkered pattern, a structure on the inside of your print. So basically like be in here, inside of this part on the flat edge, inside your print, that's what gives your print the structure rigidity. Since this is going to be on my lens and getting thrown into bags used all the time, I didn't want to have to worry about any of the teeth caving in because that would be, that would just suck, right? So I decided to up the fill to 70%. Again, it adds cost, but the costs were not significant. And by not significant, I could have gotten these for, I think somewhere between three and $4 a piece. Um, but because I wanted the higher print resolution and the extra fill, uh, it pushed the price up to about $8 plus a piece. And since I was only getting these two done, I figured at $8 a piece, I'd be okay. In terms of actually getting this on here, this is on here super snug. I mean like, whoa, snug. Um, I knew I did a pretty accurate measuring job, but like, man, if I had to pull this off right now, I would be sitting here struggling for at least two minutes on camera trying to get this off. That's how tight this is. I sanded down the inside, inside of the actual ring for about 10 minutes on each gear with 60 grit sandpaper. And so now it is on here really, really well. So if this, if this were to break, uh, my lens would most likely be broken too. Like that's how tight it is on there. And if it, my lens broke, man, if this broke, or that 18 to 35, man. Outside of making those changes, um, I think that this is amazing. I would definitely, definitely recommend if you have a follow focus, do this for all of your lenses. Uh, I know it probably will take some time. So because I'm a good guy, I've decided to help you guys out. If you have the Sigma 18 to 35 or this, which is the 50 to 100, if you go to the link below, the MardukReports.com, uh, I've made an article about this whole video. You'll see the thumbnail, you'll recognize it. In that article will be the, S, the .stl files to get this gear and that gear printed. So all you would need to do is to download those two files, take them to someone that you know that has a 3D printing machine, or you can use 3D hubs like I did to find someone locally that will 3D print the gears for you and then you can just go either pick them up or they'll just mail them to you. You don't even have to do anything, like they will fit on there. Um, you will need the sand, so after you download the files, send them the print while they're printing, go get yourself some sandpaper, some really low grit sandpaper. 60 grit minimum, I'd actually say get like 30, 30 grit minute, 30 grit if you don't wanna be sanding for 10 minutes. Um, and then once you get them, sand them down, put them on. As for the color, uh, you can, the color doesn't matter, right? Like I just picked this blue, um, not on purpose. I thought I was getting a darker blue, more of like an electric blue because I wanted to match the Fatka blue that's on all, my, all the accessories. But yeah, this is not, this is not that blue, not that blue at all. This, this has been really great to actually have this on my lenses now. Using the file focus is so much easier and now I don't have to worry about anything getting snagged like I would for this guy, right? Don't have to worry about this. Let me put this lens down before I drop it. Don't have to worry about this, this guy. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, click down here, uh, give it a thumbs up. There's a subscribe button underneath, which I would highly suggest you clicking. 
Of course, we're going to be covering more computer gear because I've got way too many cases sitting like right behind me. I can actually see the White Knight Pi 2, which I teased like forever ago. But, you know, life and life takes priority. You got you to gotta handle that first before I can come around and be making videos. But thank you again for watching. Do all the things with the buttons. You have been awesome. If you made it this far, I hope you have an amazing weekend because it is close enough to the freaking weekend. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.